Uh, excuse me. Mm. Mm. Charlo. This is embarrassing, bro. Can't even hold you up, man. They now calling you little Charlo. I don't even know how you could deal with this. I don't know why you're doing this to yourself. I really don't. You must really not be interested in boxing at all. You must, you know what, y'all, you were in Jermel. Must have came as like a package deal. You know, it just looks cool to have two twins that box. That's what I'm starting to think now. Because the way you got yourself out here looking and what people are saying now, and one of the worst things that could have happened to you is that your brother became undisputed. Because it makes you look extra worse. And it puts a magnifying glass on you. Your brother's success and accomplishments puts a magnifying glass on you. Now, this is the thing. I'm going to show you guys two comments. Um, One of them is a fan of Jamal Charlo. Um, Jewels of Life. And as you can see right here, they're saying, hey, man, I'm a fan. You know, I support you. This is not the fight that I want. You know, this is not the fight that I want. Now, this is a fan. Now, see, if I say this, it will be mistaken as hate or whatever and whatnot. You know how people are. But me and a fan is saying the same thing. And keep in mind. I will always say this in the beginning, you talking to one of the biggest Lions only supporter, uh, fan, uh, whatever you want to call me. I love the Charlos, love the Charlos. I love the idea of them. I looked at them as superstars. They should have been superstars. I'm talking about bona fide, real superstars. I also constantly say that. Because they have all the dynamics there for them, working there for them. But I'm going to digress on that. But this is what a fan says. They don't want to see this fight. You know? They don't. And this is your fan. So people can say what they want about me. But this is one of your fans. The people who will buy your tickets if you ever get on pay-per-view. That will sh they'll buy a ticket to your fight if they're ever in town. This is what they're saying. Let me put up another comment from Chris. It is one of the realest comments that I've seen. And you can't deny it. And he's right. At this point. How are you going to talk about not fighting? Demetrius Andre. You know. But you'll fight the guy that he beats. And he's a horrible fighter. He's a bum. He doesn't deserve it. But the guy that he beat deserves it. It's so obvious now. What you're doing. And this is what they're telling you. We can see what you're doing, Jamal. And you are not trying. You are not trying at all. You're waiting around. For Canelo Alvarez. You know what you're doing? What they're doing with him is what they did to Leo Santa Cruz. They let Leo Santa Cruz remain a champion. Fight these easy fights. Fatten them up for Javante Tank Davis. Jamal is sitting around waiting to cash out. On a Canelo Alvarez fight. And he's going to sit around his entire career for that to happen. And you know what we want to see? We want to see you versus Andre and Benavidez. Please take note, you super sand, super sensitive, tribal, rainbow coalition, Conelo Alvarez fans. This is the difference when we talk boxing and when y'all talk boxing. Okay? We hold people accountable. We actually keep the same energy, which is why that slogan is a urban slogan that the whole world is using. We actually keep the same energy. 
Because I hear people say, oh, well, if Charlo was to fight Triple G, they'll be saying that's a good win. And not. No, we actually keep the same energy with our people or with our fighters or whatever you want to call it. This is what it looks like. This is what it sounds like. But yet, some of you insecure boxer fans will still find your way over here. And if I say something about Canelo, it somehow contributed to the way I look or my pigmentation. So take notes, okay? Because I've done this plenty of times. But Charlo, this shit is unacceptable and it should be flat out embarrassing to you. Go look at your video on fighthype.com with Brian Custer and go into the comment section, man. Go into the comment section, bro. Your supporters and your detractors and your haters or whatever, they're all on the same accord. You on some bullshit. And you keep talking about you fighting for a legacy. You're not fighting for a legacy. You're waiting around to sell out to Canelo Alvarez. And the crazy part is, you bet not tussle with Selecki. And I'm going to put it out there. I think you might lose, bro. Honestly, I think you might lose. I think Selecki really believed what he said. Because like he said, he's been in there with the Jacobs. He's been in there with the... Um, uh, he's been in there with the Andrades. He's been in there with the people that you didn't want to fight. So yeah, he look at you as weaker or less skilled than the rest of them. That's why he's so confident. And who fault is that? You could have gave us Daniel Jacobs a long time ago. We understand the Canelos and the Triple G. We understand, you know, but at the same time, this is the hypocrisy. You doing the exact same thing that's being done to you. This is the same thing I try to say about Errol Spence doing the Keith Thurman. You doing the Canelo, your damn self. You doing the Triple G, your damn self. But yet, Andrade is this. And keep in mind, who do we want Charlo to fight? David Benavidez. David Morale or... Or uh, Demetrius Andre, the same people that we are asking Canelo Alvarez to fight. The same people. But this right here, Jamal, and I'm actually going easy on you because I like you as a person. You know what I'm saying? You real faithful and loyal and supportive of your brother. I really do like that about you. You know, and you know, the whole family man thing. And you know what I'm saying? Outside of boxing, man, you're a good dude. But inside boxing, Jamal, you ain't shit, man. This is horrible, man. This is horrible. Even Triple G hasn't done what you did. And y'all doing the same thing, but even he managed to get some damn names. So what if it's only three? That's three more than what you got. But you got to start carving off, carving out a path that goes out and around and beyond waiting on Canelo Alvarez, dog. You wasting your youth and your talent on fighting these people. Your fans say they don't want to see it. So you can't talk about people who criticize you or not a fan. Your fans say they don't want to see it. They say they see what you're doing and they're tired of it. You should be so embarrassed. It's ridiculous. You say it's not about the paycheck. You say it's for legacy, but ain't nobody seen that yet, man. To say I'm disappointed in you is an understatement. I'm more shocked that you just don't flat out feel uncomfortable getting on TV talking about this fight. And your reason for having this fight, that was a silly reason. I was going to do, you know what I'm saying, the breakdown of your interview, but I said, why? 
Just why? That's wasting too much time. I can get at you like this. I'm not going to tell you to step up because it's so far gone now. Even if you do step up, you've been doing this for so long, you will never catch up. It'll never be okay. You'll never be cool. Okay? And you can talk about legacy. You will not be talked about. Except in criticism. Those are the harsh facts. Those are the harsh truth, man. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Like, comment, subscribe. Bruce Vane. I'm out. It's a shame, man. Real shame.